你你講先，你講先，你講先。啊！你講，你講，你講。誒，多謝大家今日嚟到港怡醫院啦。誒，今日係我哋呢個兒童接種中心嘅第一日營運嚟嘅。咁亦都誒，今朝嘅運作都暫時尚算暢順。咁亦都多謝廣大同我哋嘅合作，令到我哋可以今日為廣大市民提供呢個兒童嘅接種服務。咁我哋下晝開始咧，就會有一啲團體嘅安排，令到一啲兒誒兒童咧可以直接由經歷學校安排嚟到我哋呢度得到接種嘅服務。咁亦都因為咁之下咧，我哋希望可以、呃、出一分力，令到香港嘅接種率不斷咁盡快提高。亦都因為咁咧，令到香港可以盡快走出逆境嘅、呃。除咗兒童接種服務之外咧，醫院方面我哋都會繼續提供成人嘅服務嘅。當然個服務量就冇以前咁多噶啦。咁我哋希望亦都繼續喺呢方面可以提供到協助。亦都大家都可能喺唔同嘅媒體上面都聽到，呃、我哋醫院或者其他私家醫院咧，都同緊誒、呃、醫管局同埋、呃、食衞局方面去討論點樣為公營機構合作，去提供一啲唔同嘅支援俾一啲唔同嘅病人。咁我哋都喺呢方面希望可以做到盡力嘅，做得多做多啲嘅。咁去到呢度，我一停一停，我交俾阿誒醫學院院長阿梁翠偉教授同大家再講講。我唔該。曾醫生亦都多謝咁多位傳媒嘅朋友啦。其實今日咧都係叫大家嚟咧，係去希望呼籲一下關於兒童接種疫苗嗰個重要性，同埋睇睇大家誒、呃、幫可能一啲爸爸媽媽或者係一啲嘅老師咧，可能有啲疑問嘅。咁所以都集中啊，或者喺呢一個嘅誒誒 stand up 咧，係大家一齊處理啦。啊，或者我去講一講兒童接種嗰個重要性喺邊先啦。嗱，我諗第一咧就係話，誒、呃、到而家咧，我哋係有幾宗、三宗啊、呃、兒童死亡嘅個案。咁而嗰個係俾我哋一個警號。而家都仲係去調查緊，究竟嗰個死因。但係我諗有唔少嘅家長咧，都係十分之擔心。嗱，所以如果你睇翻兒童接種咧，嗰、那個最重要咧係有兩個嘅原因嘅。第一個原因就當然係保護翻細路仔咧，佢自己希望可以抵禦呢一個新冠病毒。而最緊要嘅咧就係去防止重症，甚至無死亡。第二咧，其實就係話要去因應。其實、呃、政府咧，亦都係早前係宣布咗有一個新嘅所謂提早放暑假呢一個嘅安排，咁亦都會直接影響到香港第五波疫情整個發展咧。我哋係會同呢個兒童疫苗接種咧個時段咧係有一個密切嘅一個關係，讓我去同大家解釋一下。而家學校咧係提前放暑假，而根據政府公布嗰個時間表咧，係喺復活節假之後咧，係希望可以復課，而一路咧係去到八月底學期咧先至係完結。咁所以我哋要吸取喺外國已經係經過咗 Omicron。呢、这、一個嘅、呃、疫情，佢哋開翻學之後，佢哋嘅經驗，亦都係借嘅我哋自己喺香港多年來去處理冬季流感高峰期學校停課嗰個經驗。我哋係要明白得到，假如而家停咗課，甚至無放緊假。當你希望喺而家第五波疫情，根據我哋自己個數學模型睇咧，係會喺三月第一二個禮拜度咧，應該嗰個感染係最高峰期，跟住咧係應該係會回落嘅。咁而到到四月底咧，係應該疫情咧係已經係會退卻噶啦。但係如果你喺四月尾去學校開翻面授課，你會係有一個嘅潛在風險呢？就係、是
當你開翻學校面授課嗰陣時咧，你會又有另一個嘅爆發嘅風險。呢、这、一個我哋好清楚喺外國，佢哋新冠 Omicron 疫情過咗之後咧，當翻翻學面授課嗰陣時咧，係會喺呢一個嘅學童嗰個年齡群咧，係會再引發新一輪嘅一個、呃、疫情嘅。咁所以我哋而家可以做係點呢？第一，打針咧係保護翻自己個人，即係細蚊仔自己。而第二咧，總體嚟講喺我哋香港而家第五波疫情咧，假如我哋真係如政府而家佢宣布話，希望四月底疫情退卻之後，開翻學校面授課咧，我哋要預備點樣樣？係唔好重蹈覆轍外國嘅經驗，就係、是、有呢一個嘅再一輪嘅爆發。咁而我哋好清楚知道咧，疫苗雖然唔係可以完全防止呢個病毒嘅傳播或者感染，但係如果你係喺打第二針嘅頭三兩個月咧，其實你嗰個抗體嘅水平咧。尤其係你如果係接種伏必泰咧，係可以係大大減低嗰個傳播率同埋傳播個風險嘅，唔單止淨係幫得到你去防一個重症或者防死亡。我哋知道佢防感染嗰個風險咧，隨著時間過去，佢嗰個抗體嘅水平係會回落。但係如果你係喺第二針，甚至無第三針頭嗰三四個月咧，其實係可以維持喺一個高水平，而係可以幫手咧，尤其係伏必泰呢個平台咧，係可以幫手咧，係防止感染添嘅。咁所以呢一個咧係好重要嘅一個考慮。而我哋而家係得翻由而家二月第三個禮拜。至到四月第三四個禮拜，假如真係可以恢復面授課咧，係得翻八至十個禮拜啫。喺呢十個星期裏面咧，就係、是、我哋嗰個空窗期，係點樣樣可以將嗰個學童個接種率咧，係要推到八九成以上。如果唔係咧，我哋就算而家第五波疫情係會係根據我哋預測喺四月度咧。係應該會退卻㗎啦，慢慢。咁如果我哋四月尾又試翻翻學，而未係打針嗰個覆蓋係到足夠嘅水平咧，亦都會係令到我哋又會有另一波嘅疫情。咁所以呢一個咧係非常之緊湊嘅一個空窗期。而呢個十個禮拜嘅空窗期咧，我哋一定係要有足夠。嘅疫苗接種設施，尤其是係俾學童年齡嘅，佢係可以去做呢樣嘢。而家如果你睇、呃、我哋學童咧，如果係科興係由三歲開始可以有得打，同埋佢嗰個嘅接種點咧係比較多嘅，因為佢個儲存嗰個要求咧係冇咁誒複雜。但係如果你話伏必泰嗰個平台咧，其實香港島。九龍半島同埋新界咧，係每度係得一間嘅啫。而總嗰個所謂嘅容量咧，大概每一天係兩千度啦。咁而兩千你三十日咧，你都係六萬。我哋適齡嘅學童咧，其實係有好幾十萬嘅。如果每人都要接種兩劑，咁我哋咧其實係唔夠嗰個嘅所謂容量咧，係去喺我哋希望。復活節假復課之後嗰、那個時段咧，我哋係唔夠係可以推高個接種率咧，令到絕大部分嘅學童咧係已經係接種。咁所以呢個係要留意，同埋係要馬上係增加嗰個嘅容量。另外一個咧就係、是、我哋知道咧，其實全世界喺十八歲以下嘅學童，佢哋打針嗰個嘅所謂、呃、第一針同第二針嗰個嘅時間咧。係會有一啲嘅唔同嘅。我哋喺香港，當疫情係未第五波未開始嗰陣時咧，專家委員會係開會係考慮過，因為
，尤其是係一啲嘅潛在副作用啦，譬如心肌炎嗰個風險，雖然係好低，但係咧，因為我哋係嗰時冇疫情咧，就話我哋可以等得，所以就係話最穩陣計有兩樣嘢做咗嘅，一就係話雖然譬如你話歐美，佢喺一啲青少年咧，佢係其實隔一個月就係打第二針噶啦。我哋都話唔好啦，不如既然冇疫情或者未疫情未到咧，我哋等足三個月。尤其是如果等得越耐咧，嗰、那個抗體水平係應該會越高嘅。第二咧就係話，我哋亦都係轉咗，係本來係打呢一個手臂，我哋都轉咗去打大髀，咁亦都希望咧係將個心肌炎嗰個風險咧，亦都係大大咁減低。咁所以我哋做咗呢兩個措施咧，我哋係。喺第五波疫情之前去討論嘅，但係而家第五波嚟咗，亦都有呢啲特殊嘅考慮咧。我相信咧，專家委員會咧都應該係會、呃、要早啲開會咧，去討論兩個事情。一就係話第一針同第二針係咪都仲要等三個月打？第二咧就係話，究竟我哋係唔係有一啲已經打咗兩針嘅青少年，即是十二至十八歲嘅，其實？喺外國好多地方咧，佢哋都已經要打第三針啦。咁而如果你話佢先前已經打咗兩針，而亦都冇咩嘢嘅不良嘅反應，但係亦都過咗好幾個月嘅時間，即使話佢嗰個嘅抗體水平咧，好似大人一樣，都係已經係開始係會下降咧。我哋有冇需要去考慮第三針，係去睇翻我哋而家呢個 Omicron 第五波嘅疫情？因為唔好唔記得。我哋而家喺香港 Omicron 呢個 B A. 點二呢一個嘅病毒株咧，其實係有新冠病毒疫情以來咧，係最容易去會傳染嘅一個嘅變種病毒株嚟。所以呢一個咧係之前係冇人見過。咁所以都係講幾樣嘢啦。一就係話要大大係提升嗰個嘅接種點，尤其是係伏必泰。喺學童年齡嘅接種點。第二就係話要專家要去開會，真係去攞曬所有證據，去考慮究竟第一同第二針相隔嘅時間應該係咪可以係仿效其餘地方，尤其是而家第五波疫情嚟，亦都睇得到我哋四月尾如果係如願以上咧，係想開翻學校面授課嘅，咁呢一個咧係嗰個十個禮拜嘅。空窗期咧係十分之緊要。第三咧就係話，究竟如果有一啲嘅十二至十八歲嘅青少年，佢已經打咗兩針，但係亦都過咗好幾個月啦，可能抗體水平咧同大人都係一樣，其實都會有一個下降嘅趨勢，有冇需要考慮第三針？咁所以呢幾個咧就係我今日想同大家去交代嘅問題。第二樣嘢同大家去講一講咧，就係關於誒，亦都係睇整體嘅疫情啦。因為我哋而家其實香港人好辛苦，大家都係俾呢個第五波去煎熬，咁所以呢，都係希望冇辦法啦，咬實牙根，捱落去，希望捱過呢個第五波呢，係到到四月尾啊、五月頭呢，係可以過返一啲比較正常嘅生活。而有見及此呢，我亦都係留意得到政府呢，係將我哋嗰個九個外國。嚟香港嘅航班咧，係已經係延續咗佢哋個禁飛令，係去到四月第三個禮拜嘅都仲係。嗱，呢一個咧，我諗要大家要考慮一下。當時我哋去做呢個禁飛令啊，或者一啲嘅所謂熔斷航班機制咧，其實就係香港已經清咗零好一段時間。咁呢個係非常之合理，我哋係外防輸入啊嘛，係咪？咁如果外防輸入就係代表你自己係清咗零，但係當我哋而家每一日係會有好幾千甚至無，其實因為個檢測個容量嘅問題咧，可能已經係超過一萬兩萬嘅新嘅個案咧，我哋已經係同嗰個所謂當時去做呢一個禁飛令或者熔斷航班機制咧嗰個嘅估算或者個風險。平衡咧，已經係好唔同。大家試想下，如果到到我哋四月底禁飛令，應該係希望會係去取消啦。但係到嗰陣時咧，我哋香港亦都好可能第五波咧係已經退卻啦嗰、那個疫情。
，又到到我哋咧就變咗係自己裏面又開始係比較近乎一個非常之低水平，甚至無一個清零嘅現象。但係我哋嗰陣時先至去開翻嗰個航班嘅安排咧，會令到我哋可能又會引致多咗嘅風險，係會喺外國係傳入嚟香港。但係如果你話我哋而家其實，我相信喺香港嘅風險咧，係唔會低過喺好多呢啲嗰九個禁飛航班嘅國家咧。佢自己內在嘅風險，因為大家咧都係喺社區有一個非常之快速嘅傳播。我哋喺香港係每兩三天咧係會翻倍嘅嗰、那個嗰、那個嘅傳播。咁所以如果你話同人哋就算唔係差過佢，都同佢一樣啦。我哋喺公共衛生嗰個角度嚟睇，睇唔到有咩好好嘅理由咧，係而家係唔去俾喺滯留海外嘅香港人。係翻翻嚟，俾一個空窗期。既然我哋喺呢一度咧都有個社區擴散咧，假如佢已經係上機前係檢測陰性，到埗香港之後，佢亦都係檢測陰性，亦都需要係呢一個檢疫兩週嘅咧。其實佢個風險係肯定低過喺而家住喺香港裏面一啲嘅香港人。所以會唔會係借住呢個機會，其實就係應該。俾佢哋翻咗嚟，因為佢唔會係改變我哋而家現時本土嗰個風險嘅。但係到到如果我哋又近乎清零嗰陣時，先至俾佢翻嚟咧，反而可能咧係嗰個風險係重大。所以呢一個咧，亦都咧可能係大家係要考慮一下。即係我哋都係要諗多幾步，即係其實係一個、呃、整個疫情嗰個控制咧，係要諗下啊，而家我哋係咁做。但係兩個月、三個月、四個月、半年之後點呢？咁呢一個咧，希望亦都係大家可以去一齊去討論一下。好，唔該。係請大家睇嘅時候講埋自己同邊個傳染嘅，呢位男士先。Um, you, so, 你要講大聲啲，唔好意思啊。Why, why do you think it's so important for children to get vaccinated、uh, right now? And also,、um, do you have a latest estimate of when the spread of the virus will peak, and how many people will be infected? At the peak, and also、uh, you previously proposed locking down the city to cut the COVID outbreak. Do you think the government's compulsory testing plan for the entire population can really help bring the virus under control? All right. So essentially, your second and third questions are about the risk assessment and a forecast. I'll address those in a moment. But your first question is about why it is so important to vaccinate children now. All right. There are two reasons. One is that we have had three recent. Deaths、um, in children, and there are still a couple who are in very serious to critical conditions, who are in hospital at the moment. We are still looking into what the underlying reasons for those tragic cases really are, but it is so important, first and foremost, to get vaccinated, as in adults, for kids to protect themselves. Either of the vaccines available in Hong Kong should be good enough to protect against serious complications and deaths. So that's reason number one. It's for self-protection, and that's the overriding reason I'm sure that is on every parent's mind at the moment. The second reason is actually looking at government's announcement yesterday about actually. Switching the summer holiday months early, such that everybody is actually now on holidays, and then the plan is to resume classes, hopefully in person, by the end of April. Now, if you then look at why that might be, I think that it is important to learn. From the experiences overseas, places which had gone through the Omicron wave and who have resumed in-person classes, and in many of those countries, when classes resume in school-age children, you see another mini-wave as the children recongregate 
in the school setting. And that is why it is so important between now and the end of April, if the plan is to go ahead with in-person classes then, is to vaccinate as many children as possible so that they would get the protection that they can from the vaccines, not only to just protect themselves, but also to the extent to reduce the chances that they will spread it to one another. And that is so, so important. And it is particularly useful when you have the BioNTech platform, which within two, three, four months of the second dose or the third dose, we know that the neutralizing antibodies are still at a very high level. They haven't waned by then. And that's why I think that it would be extremely useful to get our kids vaccinated during the upcoming two months of their so-called summer break, such that when classes do resume face-to-face, -face, we reduce and minimize the intra-school spread of the virus while the neutralizing antibody levels are still high enough to hopefully dampen transmission. And that is the reason why. As to the risk assessment, our mathematical model, which has so far tracked the actual empirical trajectory very well, unfortunately, we predict that the fifth wave will peak somewhere between the first and the second week of March, after which we should actually see the epidemic gradually fade away. And that is exactly why it is so important that we do not allow the window between now and the end of April uh, to not actually get our kids vaccinated, because we must protect the entire community from getting another wave of infection, just as the fifth wave is fading out when classes resume uh, at the end of April or at the beginning of May. Do you think the government's compulsory testing uh, uh, arrangement uh, for the entire population will really help control the virus? And are you worried about the risk of people getting infected while being up at the uh, testing centers? Okay, so I think that it is extremely important to consider the timing and the supporting infrastructure in order to have a successful experience of universal PCR testing. Now, first, on the infrastructure. We need to have sufficient isolation facilities outside of the home and to have sufficient provisions for people who cannot be accommodated in isolation facilities and have to self-isolate at home if we are going to be able to do and to do the universal testing and deal with the potential positives that you will find. So the infrastructure is critically important. Before we have sufficient isolation facilities and support for those who have to isolate at home, it would not be advisable to launch any mass testing exercise. Secondly, it's about the timing. There are actually, in epidemiology, only two good time stages to do universal screening. One is like what the mainland has always been doing in its dynamic COVID-0 policy, and that is at the very, very beginning. So at the very, very beginning, when out of a population of 5 or 10 million, you only have a handful of cases and you launch universal screening, and therefore you basically go and extinguish the stuttering beginnings of those infected seeds. So it never takes off. We have missed that opportunity in Hong Kong. So we cannot replicate and copy and paste the mainland experience because it is a very different stage of the, of the epidemic. In fact, the media I was reading has already reported that the fifth wave in Hong Kong has already exceeded the total number of cases in Wuhan. So we are actually beyond that point. Now, after that point, the other time period 
where it may be appropriate to launch such a universal testing project is after the epidemic has peaked, when it is on its natural fade out stage. And if you then do universal testing and you have, the, you have sufficient isolation facilities to support it, you could then hasten that fade out than it otherwise would naturally do so. Because if you have sufficient isolation facilities and you then identify rather quickly with two or three consecutive tests, all of the positive infected people in the community and isolate them so that they do not go on to infect others, then you can hasten that fade up. But it would be on the downward slope of that epidemic curve. It would not be during the exponential growth phase. Because during the exponential growth phase, one, we don't have the isolation facilities. Two, it would not be a useful exercise because it is still growing and you are not able to actually turn that trajectory. All right? So 最重要是打两针甚至无罪都打埋第三针这个是最重要的所以如果你是最主要的目的是要防重症防这个病发症和防死亡的呢任何一只科兴疫苗都可以达到这个效果的第二呢就是说我们知道除了 如果看回不同的疫苗,它就会有不同的效用 無論你初頭,即是你打完第二針或第三針,頭那三個月,無論你有去到幾高都好,過了三個月,或者四個月,就會開始會慢慢下降的這個抗體水平。當然你說,如果大家都會下降,你初頭去到比較高的,你下降就
知道你自己揀緊邊只，而係有啲咩嘢嘅好處，有啲咩嘢嘅憂慮。咁呢一個咧，我諗係最最緊要睇得到咧。其實我早前所建議咧，點樣加強我哋嘅社交距離措施呢？有啲人叫做封城，有啲人叫做禁足，有啲人咧就係話：咦，其實唔係淨係中國內地先至會咁做喎。其實喺澳洲啊、紐西蘭啊，甚至無歐洲各地咧，其實長年累月喺舊年咧係有大半年都係做緊呢啲嘢嘅。咁所以無論你中意叫佢做咩都好啦，而家我哋睇得好清楚嘅咧，就係話我哋最緊要而家所謂做更加強嘅。或者加強版嘅社交距距離措施咧，唔係要停止呢一個嘅疫情。而家疫情發展到呢一個嘅地步咧，係唔可能會自己可以停下來嘅。所以我哋係已經過咗嗰個控制，去令到佢好快冇辦法去幾何式上嗰一個嘅時期㗎啦。因為而家我哋幾何式上已經上咗兩個禮拜啦，所以我哋已經過咗嗰個黃金時段。我哋而家點解我都仲係講緊話，我哋係要去再加強，無論係自愿或者係強制，再加強個社交距離嘅措施呢？最主要嘅原因呢，就係因為我哋要保住我哋公立醫院嗰二千張急症病床係唔會崩潰，因為如果我哋越多人係受感染，雖然呢一個係比較輕嘅病毒株。但你越多人感染呢，就算冰山一角，先至需要去用我哋一啲比較高規格嘅病床呢，都會令到我哋崩潰嘅。咁所以我哋上個禮拜都歷歷在目，好令人心痛嘅一啲例子。我相信如果唔係病到真係要入院，唔會有人係夜晚黑五度喺條街度瞓兩晚，係咪？咁所以就係點樣樣令到？我哋公營醫療系統嗰兩千或者兩千零張，因為唔可能去，就算你點樣樣快起院都冇可能加呢啲真真正正係所謂嘅急症嘅病床嘅。咁所以呢一個就係最主要嗰個原因。呢、這個我,我未未聽到政府有咩公佈，所以詳情我諗等佢出咗之後，我相信佢哋都會考慮得好周詳嘅呢、這個就。但係你頭先講得啱，亦都頭先有另外一位記者問咧，就係、是呃、做任何呢啲檢測呢，其實任何聚集人嘅地方呢，都係有嗰個所謂交叉感染嗰個風險。咁亦都就係點解我哋要特別要小心。咁所以我相信呢，即係點解要一個預約制度啊？希望唔會聚集太多人啊，同埋要有返嗰個適當嘅距離啊，呢啲亦都係其中一個考慮。咁亦都係另外。點解呢？就係、是、我話要過咗高峰期先至去考慮做呢樣嘢，除咗係因為嗰個公共衞生嘅原因咧，亦都係因為交叉感染嗰個控制嘅風險咧，可能係比較係可控啲。There is no good evidence to show uh, protective e efficacy in children who are under three years old. And in fact, if you actually look at some early data from uh, Western countries, uh, vaccinating children, even with uh, the mRNA platform below four years old, uh, there doesn't seem to be convincing evidence of protection. So I think we have to be very, very careful. While it is tragic and absolutely heartbreaking to witness uh, such young children uh, dying from the disease, um, I'm not sure that uh, we should reconsider before the evidence is actually there. Um, and your first question is about? All right, yes, you are talking about the uh, death rate. To calculate what we call case fatality risk, or in popular jargon, death rate, 
during the exigency of an evolving epidemic, it's not a simple division exercise. It is simply wrong. Let me say it again. You cannot divide today's registered number of deaths by the cumulative number of reported cases to date. It is wrong. If you do that, you risk either scaring yourself or falsely reassuring yourself. We should have learned that lesson 20 years ago when, when we were asked by the then government and the then WHO to sort out how exactly to estimate the case fatality ratio. If you go back to 2003, at the very beginning of the epidemic, doing simple division gave you a case fatality risk of 3%. Then it rose to 5%. Eventually, when the entire epidemic was done, it was 17%, 1-7. So you cannot actually do that. And it doesn't mean that it necessarily goes up as the epidemic progresses. If you go to 2009, the swine flu pandemic, it actually came down. So it takes careful epidemiological analysis to try and estimate and get rid of the inherent bias. That is what we're trying to do. And that's why there are two sources of data that is so critical. One is detailed data on each individual, which I know the government department of health is trying its very hardest to put together. But please be patient with them because they are completely overwhelmed. Most of our colleagues in the government department of health are operating on two to three hours sleep per night. So that takes time to put that data together. Once that data reaches us, we will give you an answer as soon as we possibly can. It took us three weeks 20 years ago during SARS. The second thing that we are trying to do is to really go and estimate without bias the total number of people who are actually infected as opposed to people who are confirmed. The total number of people who are actually infected far exceeds the reported cases for a variety of reasons. Some people are asymptomatic, they don't get self-tested, they don't go for PCR testing, they have no reason to, and you completely miss it. There are other reasons that perhaps because they don't want to be separated from their children, therefore they don't actually report their positive RATs to government. With the bottleneck for DTS samples that goes up to a week, I have got several students who still haven't heard back the results. Uh, and therefore, a lot of these testing bottlenecks, as well as behavior of the population in response to the personal circumstances and the consequences of testing positive, you are not capturing nearly a fraction of the total number of infected cases. My guess, my educated guess, is that you probably are looking at a ratio of round about 10. That is, the total number of infected people on a daily basis is probably 10 times, give or take, of the reported number of confirmed cases. And if your denominator then is that much larger, then you can imagine that your case fatality risk or your death rate is actually much smaller. And that is precisely why, as of next week, we will be launching and what we will be doing is we will take systematic random samples, 10,000 people in Hong Kong. We will ask them to perform self-tests for both the rapid antigen as well as the antibodies. And then we will use epidemiological methods as other countries have done and as we have done before to try and work out what is the real number of total infected? Okay? I'm afraid this is the last question. The gentleman over
，我係絕對鼓勵喺誒學校，無論係到校或者係用一個團體嘅一個嘅方式，都希望咧係可以推高疫苗接種率。當然喺安老院舍而家係如火如荼進展係非常好，但係都希望可以仲快啲。學校係我哋另外一個所謂嘅戰場，點解呢？因為我頭先都解釋咗啦，如果我哋真係想預期係四月尾係開翻面授課，如果我哋到時疫情第五波咧，據我哋估算咧，應該係差唔多退卻噶啦。但係細路仔一翻學嘅咧，喺外國實在太多個地方都見過啦，佢就會有另外一波嘅疫情嘅。咁而你要防止或者避免呢個情況發生咧？你就要喺而家呢兩個月咧，係盡量將學童接種率係會要係提升到一個高水平。咁而第二咧，就係話如果你學童係未接種嘅咧，你喺呢兩個月係冇辦法係可以接種曬兩針嘅，因為而家咧第一同第二針咧，其實係要話三個月嘅。呢一個係我哋當時專家組係未有第五波疫情之前咧做嗰個所謂風險評估個利弊嗰個嘅平衡。但係而家有咗第五波，亦都有呢個咁特殊嘅所謂提前放暑假，跟住就四五月翻學咧，我哋係應該咧專家組咧都應該要開會咧去討論呢個問題，因為其實你話喺一啲其餘嘅地方咧，第一同第二針喺呢個學童嚟講咧，其實佢哋係一個月可以係短到一個月咧，好似大人咁樣打嘅，咁所以我哋呢一個咧都仲要進一步研究，不過係值得係要緊急研究嘅一個問題，好嘛？唔該曬 ，thank you。